I go by Sirtse or Sasha and I've been collecting art books for quite a few years now. And I think I finally have enough variety to make an interesting video out of all the ones that I've gotten so far. So I got these books from a variety of places, but the main ones are actually Amazon and then a bookstore called Kino Kunia. Um, so those two are my main ones. And then I've gotten some gifts as well as books from individual artists. So usually they'll do Kickstarters or maybe just sell them in their online store and like that. And I like to buy those books as well. I'll try my best to kind of link or give you guys a general idea of where I got the books from just in case you want to seek it out yourself. But it might not be one for one, but I'll do my best. The other thing that I wanted to say was my interest in particular with art books definitely gravitates towards the anime art style. So I really love Japanese art books. I have quite a few with hundreds of artists in them so I can see different styles and stuff like that. But I also really love kind of architecture stuff, um, a little bit of fantasy elements. I have some video game art books as well. Uh, some of my favorite games I try to get their art books because I really love flipping through the pages. And a lot of them will have like concept art and stuff like that too. So I'm really interested in that. But I also do do illustration myself. So a lot of these books are illustration based. And that's what I really like. Um, illustration in particular I think look very good on a computer monitor especially if you have a nice one but seeing them printed out is really different especially um, for some works that use more watercolor and stuff like that um, they'll be even printed on nicer paper so you can really see those details that you might really not pick up on if you were looking at it from a computer monitor so now let's focus your attention on my beautiful bookcase right here straight from Ikea. Uh, <laughs> so these bottommost um, bookshelves are filled with a lot of my art books and stuff like that. Um, and then just some other like drawing books and stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the ones that I have displayed in the front here. I have some of them displayed because they're just my favorite books. And some of them are just like very visually pleasing. So when you walk by, you're like, ooh, that looks nice. Um, so let's look at the bottom ones here. Uh, right here we have Momentary by Ilya Kupchinov and this is a book that I have that is just a single artist. So this artist I've been following uh, on social media for so so long now so when he came out with a just art book like this I thought it was gorgeous and what I really like about it is that first of all it's thick. There is a lot of artwork here. It's all polished. It's all beautiful. We have like processes like that. Um, so you can see the step-by-step -step of how he makes it. But also what I think is really cool about this is that um, if you go all the way to the end here, you'll see that um, he's got sketches in here as well. And what I think is really cool about the sketches is that um, it's on a different textured paper. So the earlier ones are kind of glossy um, to show off that kind of really finished look. And then we move on here and we have like a almost a drawing paper style texture. So it looks like pencil on the paper, which I think is really nice. So moving on, we have this book and I love this book a lot. This book is called Girls Illustration, a cutting edge Maui art book of girls for girls. And this is an art book that is a collection of a bunch of artists. Um, and it's really just beautiful and gorgeous. And I believe I got it at Kino Kinea. I did. It was $30, pretty good. Um, and I love this book a lot, so it has the contents and there is a lot of Japanese artists in here. I'd say 99% of them are probably Japanese. And what's cool is this book um, has these full-size illustrations, which I really like. Some books have like small ones and they kind of take up the whole room. But most of these are like big full pages. And each artist is allotted like a few pages together. So you can kind of see how each person's style comes together and then You'll move on to the next few pages and it'll be another person's style. So you can kind of see how uh, their work comes together and then you move on and you can see there's a bunch of artists. So whenever I'm like kind of bored with my style or need some kind of inspiration, I'll usually go to books like this with a bunch of different styles because then I can get a general idea of what I kind of want to draw. So now this one here is probably my number one favorite. Either this one or the girls illustration one is my favorite. And this one is part of a big collection. From what I understand, uh, they do this yearly and they just put the best of the best what they deem uh, 
from um, illustrations wise in here. So this book is incredibly thick and if you think that that last one had a bunch of artists, this one has an insane amount of artists in it. Um, so this is the one that I have is version 3. It actually came with other stuff too. It came with came with this really pretty clear file. I wish that I used these. Yeah, on the back you can see um, the 2009 and the 2013 versions that they did. And it's just a huge collection of like the best of the best stuff. So I could spend hours just looking at this and looking at all the details. My one complaint, and I mean this isn't really a complaint, but some of this artwork is so beautiful, but it's, it's so small. And like how much would I love to see that be blown up to the size of this page or even bigger is, you know. So that's my one complaint about this book is that there's just, it's jam-packed with art, but it's to the detriment of some of it being quite small. Um, and that's, that's really a small price to pay for how much art you get from this book. So this one I definitely got from Kinokuniya. And the thing about Kinokuniya is some of these art books, you can't look inside until you buy it. It's covered in a clear film and it's stuck shut so you can't really look at it so the only way that you can see is uh you can kind of hope for what's inside sometimes they'll have a few variations on the back of what it is um so you kind of just like pray to god that it's what you want and it doesn't have too much text in it because you know i'm sure text is really useful for artists who are reading this who are japanese i can't understand it so i have to look at the pretty pictures instead and if you're into the Twitter scene or the Instagram scene of artists, um, especially Japanese artists, you'll probably see familiar faces here, which is really cool. So sometimes I'll look at this book and I'll be like, oh, I saw this online already. Like I retweeted this image. So it's really cool to see a collection of artwork from artists you already follow. So and you can always find more. What's nice is that they give you the information and they'll even show you um, their like twi <laughs> Twitter or their pics of usually um, is a big one. Uh, so you can find these artists after you look through this book. So if you're really digging one particular artist, you know, there's only a few pages of art of them in particular. You can just search them up, which is really awesome. Um, this book, I believe I got as a gift, but I really, really love it. And this is a little bit different from the other ones that I have. It is it's not character based. It's like a building. And you could argue that buildings have character in them regardless. Um, but this book I love a lot because it has just beautiful architecture oh my gosh but they're they're rooms you know they're they're lived in that's what i love about this book is you can kind of see the the textures and stuff like that and um that's what i love about building drawings is is instead of it being looking perfectly polished uh it, it has this kind of like grunge to it like if you're walking through a japanese street and you see the storefront you know you're you're not going to see it perfectly polished you're going to see it with this bike on the side with uh, these hangers on the side you know and and all of this like a little bit of grime discoloration and stuff like that and um this book really does a great job of that uh, it's also done in what I believe is watercolor and uh, you can see they're using like a marker like ink pen as well so it really adds to the kind of grittiness of it but this I think is really cool because it helps you to kind of understand uh, details a little bit more at least for me when I'm looking at this I'm thinking like look at how they did the brick pattern here so you can see how it's textured in a way where it's not perfect. So when I when I do bricks, sometimes I feel like they need to be perfect. But the fact is that a lot of it isn't like that. You know, there's there's tons of wear and tear on these things, and the way that this artist in particular approaches this, I think, really useful to like kind of learn from. Okay, moving on. We have this book right here. This is probably my newest book. I think I, I think I got this as a gift for my birthday. Um, and this one's really cool too. It's also a collection of artists, well, one of my favorite types of books, but this is specifically about fashion, uh, which is really, really nice, especially if you're like bored and you're like, hey, what do I wanna draw? Open this book up, look at some fashion, get some inspiration, get drawing, you know? It's awesome. But uh, I really like this book. It's very colorful, it's very bright, um, lots of shapes, lots of cool designs. And what's nice about fashion illustration in particular is you get to see lots of cool silhouettes. So in, in like a general illustration, like some of the couple of books we saw earlier, you can kind of see they're a little bit busy. So the illustration itself is the whole thing. Everything is in the background and um, these little additions, flowers, 
animals, uh, scenery, everything like that. But in fashion illustration, you're usually focusing solely on the person, so you can generally look at a piece of art and just look at the silhouette, right? So we have the background here, which is really, really plain, and then you can see the silhouette of these characters, and I think that um, this would be good to draw from and learn from with silhouette, because it's so important, especially in character design and stuff like that. Moving on to these last two books that I have displayed like in the forefront and this one I really like um, and I think the scenery is really beautiful that's why I have it in the front here but it's the art of Makoto Shinkai. Makoto Shinkai is a very very talented and very well known well renowned artist um, who works on beautiful Japanese animation movies and um, this is just basically a book filled with his beautiful luscious backgrounds he's really known for these beautiful scenes and just kind of bringing them to life so what's really nice about this is you'll see a bunch of them and I like that uh, since he works on movies and films and and backgrounds and stuff like that the book is actually <laughs> very horizontal compared to my other books so you can see he has a lot of these scenes and what's nice about this book also is sometimes they'll show scenes in different lighting which I think is really really interesting to look at so he'll have the same scene of maybe a train station and then he'll have it at dusk and at dawn and you can kind of see how those colors play a big factor in the mood of the illustration or piece and this last one here oh. I cherish this book a lot, um, but that's just because I'm a huge fan of Heikala. So Heikala is another really talented uh, artist that I really love to look at the artworks of. I have a bunch of their prints, um, and then they came out with an art book, and I thought it was gorgeous, and I backed the Kickstarter, so I got like a bunch of other stuff with it, little notebook and pens and stuff like that, but of course, this is the bread and butter of it. And um, so Heikala is, uh, I believe, a Finnish artist. Um, and she primarily works with uh, watercolors and ink drawings, although she'll do digital as well, but it all has that kind of more grainy feel. She'll use watercolor in a way where it, it helps to bring out the mood of the illustration. Watercolor is a little bit messy and it's, it's kind of unforgiving, so it's hard to add these kind of small details and this mood lighting to an illustration unless you really know what you're doing and stuff like that. So when I look at these illustrations, even though I'm primarily a digital artist, I feel a lot of inspiration for how uh, she approaches creating a drawing and her general concepts and the way that she kind of applies this stuff, because it's very whimsical, lots of, of interesting things like this here. Um, these general concepts that you wouldn't really see very often. And speaking of Heikala, uh, that was the big art book that I got from her, but before that, I supported her with her little zine as well, and this is this is really sweet. Um, this was probably a few years before that, but I've been following her for so long and I really love her work. So you can see here that she even drew something specifically for this art book. I don't know if you can tell, but um, this has a, a marker and ink drawing in the front of it, and she signed it, which is really nice. Um, but this is a small collection of her artwork. I think this is her Inktobers in particular. So a bunch of stuff, and I really like it. I have a bunch of zines. I won't show you all of them, but um, I like zines too. So now that I've gone over this general area, which looks very sad and empty right now, maybe I'll put them back, but uh, I have this bottom area. Can you guys see? Wow, so some of these books I won't go over, but a lot of them I will show you to you guys right now, and this is, um, like a big art book collection of like video games and movie stuff. So uh, I'll show you guys a couple that are very similar really quick. Um, and these are probably one of the more common things that you can find is the art of Miyazaki movies. So here we have the art of Princess Mononoke. Then I have the art of Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. This one's gorgeous, so very textured and really nice. Um, and then we have the art of Miyazaki's Spirited Away, which was probably my first Miyazaki art book. Um, I really love all of these. They're so beautiful. They show all of the different drawings 
and concepts from the movie. Um, if you've watched these movies before, you know how beautiful they are. So seeing an art book of it is really just spectacular for some of it as well. Something like this where you can see the, the drawing of the parents and when they become pigs. It's really funny to see these like little sketches and then fully finalized in the movie. Um, so these are really cool books. Um, you can probably find these in a lot of bookstores. Personally, I haven't had that much luck with finding art books in like a general bookstore like uh, Barnes & Nobles, but I think these ones you might be able to find. Continuing on the kind of IP brand art books, this one is one of my favorites and literally I love all of these games, but Fire Emblem Awakening, the art of, oh my goodness. When I first saw the Fire Emblem artwork, I haven't played the games, I just kind of stumbled upon it online. I thought it was so nice that I went and played the game, even though I had no idea what the playstyle of it was. Luckily, I liked it and bought this art book, but I think it's so gorgeous. And this book is a thick one. Look at him, he's a big boy. I love uh, art of video game books in general, but what's really cool about Fire Emblem is it has a lot of lore to it and a lot of characters. And I love character art, so seeing these fully finalized um, character art pieces here is really, really nice and you can kind of read about them and see sketches of them and that's another huge thing that I love is you can see the different iterations of these characters before they were finalized. So you can see they were messing around with different colors and different hairstyles, different silhouettes and stuff like that. Something that you wouldn't really like consider as you're playing the game, but uh, lots of different stuff went into creating these characters. So it's really interesting to see them be worked on. Even side characters like barbarians and, and war monks and stuff like that. You know, you don't really think about their designs, but somebody was working on this and you can kind of see um, if you're interested in something like this and concept art and sketching for games like this and, you know, would you be interested in something like that? Because you can kind of see the workflow of that whole process in these books. All right, so I took a moment to put back these uh, books so it doesn't look so sad and empty there. But moving on, uh, I have two books from the same artist. And, and it's one of those things where if you're in the art community, you'll probably know this artist. And that is Loish. Uh, I have two books here, The Sketchbook of Loish and The Art of Loish. Both of these I backed the Kickstarter by uh, 3D Total. Um, that is the publishing company. And so kind of back these art books when they came out so I got lots of cool stuff with them but really beautiful so Loish's art is um, very kind of memorable and specific um, her artwork is painterly she uses a lot of interesting colors but what I think I know most about her artwork is the flow of her art and the way that it kind of moves and the shapes that it creates and stuff like that. And what's nice about buying art books from specific artists that you like is you really get to see their intentions in the process and they'll give you uh, these blurbs about what they were thinking as you were working so you can kind of get a clear idea of their thought process and how they go about deciding what they want to draw and how they draw it and stuff like that rather than just seeing it on social media and kind of moving on. Um, so really when I like an artist I will always jump at the opportunity to buy one of their art books if they come out with it especially if it's a smaller artist and they just come out with a zine or something like that I usually jump at the opportunity to kind of grab that and have it as a printed medium. You know I really like having them in your hands you can kind of see a lot of the details a little bit more with that. And here is The Art of Loish, very beautiful, has lots of finalized illustrations but also shows you the process and uh, some older artwork so you can see kind of where she came from, concept art and storyboards, some work that she's done throughout the years whether it's for um, animation or just for herself, really cool book get the Loesch art books if you like this kind of style. It's definitely worth it. Moving on, I still have a lot, so I'm gonna go a little bit faster now, but um, I think this one is a good one to point out because it's a little bit different from the others that I've had. Um, whereas some of the others uh, have a more painterly kind of approach or maybe like a mixture, this one I think is really cool because it's very drawn out, very animated, very kind of um, character heavy movement. And this is Pandemonium 
by uh, Devil's Candy Artist Rem. So this book is all about their original characters in this Devil's Candy world. Um, and what's really cool about it is you can see all of these giant beautiful scenes that they've drawn, but they're so good at being character based because of this comic that they've created these characters are really strong and they're memorable and then to have them be seen in this world you can kind of see how um, this artist in particular really works hard to kind of show that each character has different expressions different emotions different personalities in general that you can kind of see moving through these illustrations and stuff like that so you can see how some of them are a little bit more moody some of them are a little bit cheerful and you can see there's different approaches to her style as well and you can kind of move on and see these black and white illustrations and even though they're in a slightly different style you can definitely see that it's still the same artist doing it and I think that um, Rem in particular does a great job of that is showing this kind of black and white gray piece but these characters are still drawn similarly and even if she does a traditional or if she does a digital or a mixture of two it still feels like her artwork even if her process is a little bit different moving on we have another japanese art book but this one is not a collection this is a particular artist i believe um, it's called arietta um, and this is just a big collection of this artist's work uh, how much did this cost? This cost $50 from Kinokuniya. And this is one of those books that I think was sealed. So I kind of hoped for the best that I had a bunch of illustrations in it. And I was very lucky because it does. There's so many, so many characters, so many full illustrations, but also some really cool sketches and black and white work. Um, what's nice about having this kind of art book is seeing how the same artist approaches different kinds of themes and the way that they kind of uh, shift their art style a little bit to make it work better with the theme that they're drawing with. And lastly, I just have a few scenes that I want to show off. Um, these are smaller uh, and they're usually um, self-published so it's not a big mass production or anything like that usually they'll sell out or you'll only be able to get them in the pre-order period and stuff like that and some of these I've actually participated in myself so of course I've gotten the book that they've sent me as well so this one is monochromatic by Krasikai and this is a single artist zine and it has some fire emblem art in it really gorgeous stuff I really love how this artist draws characters and I love Fire Emblem so it was perfect. Here we have Crescent and I actually got this at a convention in Los Angeles years ago and this is a zine that actually um, three different artists made together which I think is really fun. Um, so you can see that they actually signed it here um, and you can see the mixture of the artist style so you'll get one you'll get another artist and then at the end it'll be another artist and it's really cool to have three different artists in a single zine um, usually you'll see either like a mixture of one artist per page or a single zine for one artist but this is a little bit different so yeah then we have the gamer girl zine and i actually drew the cover of this as well as another illustration on the inside this was the only zine that i've actually done a cover of but i think it came out really cool you can see the different characters um, playing different video games and stuff like that which is really nice and then just a bunch of nintendo fan art really love this uh, zine i thought it was really fun to be a part of to be honest i can't remember what character i drew for it what did i draw for this oh I drew Fire Emblem. Of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> I remember I worked really hard on this illustration. It was quite difficult for me at the time because I didn't draw backgrounds at all. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with this piece and I was really glad to be a part of it. And this last one here is called Born to Make History. And you guessed it, it is a Yuri on Ice zine that I was a part of. I love this cover too because you can kind of see. Oh, it's so glossy and pretty. I remember this one came with like a lot of other loot, so like pins and like uh, stickers and stuff like that, and I was really happy with it. But I really liked being a part of this one as well. I still love Yuri and Ice, even if it's been so long since I watched it. Um, so yeah, Whew. 
That was a lot of art books. Thank you so much for listening to me blabber and looking at them. Uh, I'll try my best to link everything down in the description where I got it so you guys can take a look yourself and see if you want to grab anything you like. Um, I had a lot of fun sharing this with you guys, so I hope that you found some more interest in art books, maybe found some that you want to buy yourself, or are interested in maybe participating in a zine or anything like that. Um, thank you so much for watching, it was a pleasure to have you guys. Make sure to feed the YouTube algorithm by giving it comments and likes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner so it can be a happy, growing boy. <laughs> thank you so much, I'll see you next time, bye!